Module 1.2, Our Environments. Week 2, Thinking Lecture 1.2, Animal Perception, Animal Cognition, Individuality, med Meditation, and the Eternal Present. Evolutionary psychology informs and reminds us that we are not alone as thinking beings, not just in the universe, according to the Drake Equation, which deals with probability, but here on the Earth, where it's a matter of fact and not speculation that there are mines in the waters and mines in the trees and on the savannas. Highly intelligent thinking animals, although in the process of going extinct because of our habitat changes and pollutants, still exist all over this planet. And we must talk about them in order to harness our hubris and protect from, and protect from solipsistic arrogance and anthropomorphism. Fundamentalist Islam and Christianity have worked hard to reduce our field of perception to include only Homo sapiens and have succeeded in using anthropocentrism to destroy our ecosystems and life support systems. Sustainability without including other members of God's creation, though, is untenable. Award-winning science fiction author David Brin has been tackling the idea of narrowing the gap between human cognition and animal cognition through his famous Uplift series of futuristic novels in which it is the duty of the first sentient life form on any given planet to help the other large brain creatures there develop their own consciousness and intelligence. Apes, cetaceans, and elephants become the most obvious candidates on our Earth sea, given their brain mass to body ratio and behavioral repertoires, and so they are the beings featured in his uplift novels. Now recently, Bryn has been musing on what is missing when it comes to developing one's intelligence, and in his recent blog, he has mused that perhaps the chief barrier to evolving and maintaining a strong intelligence is the lack of media to store memories outside the brain. He cites the work of philosophy and economics professor Don Ross of College Cork, who, quote, suggests that the biggest obstacle to effective sapience on the part of elephants, corvids, and toothed whales might be their ability to store information outside themselves. To build upon a lifetime of experience, say, in a herd matriarch or some of our cave ancestors, in a critically expanding and accumulating way. We began doing this by extending human lifespans so elders might carry oral traditions even into their 60s. Then came writing and so on. He says, this leads to an intriguing possibility that uplift of the smartest animal, pre-sapient species, might begin not with genetic meddling, but by simply offering sites for external memory storage, say obelisks perched along an elephant migratory path or in some shallow dolphin-friendly bay that record and play back correlated inputs from any who come to purposely engage. If our deep learning algorithms can crack the elephant communication code, he says, and enable us to engage in conversation with them, perhaps we could create this means of storage such that elephants are motivated to attend to it." End quote. Don Ross's suggestion that, quote, elephants might have the necessary capacities for personhood, we just need them to help them acquire the cognitive scaffolding, is intriguing because it offers an empirical strategy for enhancing cognitive ability and shows why thinking in and of itself is so inadequate without some media for recording those thoughts and why thinking out loud in some form is so necessary. Ross writes, quote, I don't think that elephants currently express the full range of personal and creative capacities that humans do, but I suspect all that's missing are certain informational and institutional structures along with the motivations to innovate upon them. In humans, we know what those structures look like. They are the books, movies, museums, and laws that manifest in the world what otherwise exists only in our heads. It might be that there's a lot going on in the heads of elephants, but they just haven't been moved to externalize and store it in the environment the way we have. However, he says, if elephants do have all the raw material, the raw mental material it takes to be persons, a time could come in the near future when we might draw them into a more expansive kind of personhood. The behavioral economics experiments that a colleague and I are planning to do, are planning to run with a group of semi-wild female elephants in South Africa should begin to test the plausibility of this arresting speculation, end quote. In his classic book, Animal Minds, Beyond Cognition to Consciousness, Don Griffin echoes Darwin's observation that the difference between man and the other animals is one of degree and not kind. Biological anthropology, particularly the work of Jane Goodall, among others, 
has shown that our closest primate relatives make tools, think with intention, and communicate to cooperate. What do you think really separates us from our non-human fellows on Earth? Wilson, on page 20, reminds us that, quote, although highly intelligent in at least one aspect, chimps score far below humans in others. They live in the here and now. They cannot plan their actions for even the next day. Whereas humans can construct scenarios thousands of years into the future and millions of miles into space. When supplied with paint and brush, chimps can draw pictures, but not as well as humans of any age beyond infancy. For example, chimps can spontaneously draw the outline of a face, but not the details within it, a feat any young human child performs effortlessly. Chimpanzees also fall short in the ability to cooperate or act altruistically. He quotes Duke University neuroscientists Heron Tari, who Heron Tan, who say, quote, we suspect that it is not a tendency to act altruistically that makes humans unique. Instead, it seems more likely that our species is unusually cooperative because of our flexible ability to avoid high cost helping, that is, harmful to reproductive success, while recognizing the benefit of mutualistic endeavors, end quote. And Wilson summarizes, quote, the ancestors of our species developed the brain power to connect with other minds and to conceive unlimited time, distance, and potential outcomes. This infinite reach of imagination, put quite simply, is what made us great. Page 21. What I find fascinating about the elephant memory storage hypothesis of Ross is that we are in a unique position today to uplift and extend whatever latent imaginative capacity other large-brained animals may already have by giving them add-ons external to their own central processing units that mimic the function of those internal structures that we possess that made us so great. With the strength of the modular computer and cloud storage metaphors that we now see working so powerfully in our own lives applied to other organisms, we may actually stumble into an even deeper understanding of the connectedness of all life and the capacities for higher order thinking that can come from coordinated collective intelligence. Now, I remember as an undergrad at Harvard studying biological anthropology and cybernetics and taking evolutionary biology with Professor E.O. Wilson in person, how his lens on the world stimulated powerful insights into the nature of cognition. It was his class that motivated me to study marine mammal intelligence and communication and led to my senior thesis with Dr. Terry Deacon on what we believe to be the world's first and only talking harbor seal, a male of the species Foca vitulina named Hoover, who was living at the New England Aquarium who startled visitors with his regular vocalizations that clearly included the words and phrases, hey, 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 hoover, hoover, hey, hello there, hello there, hey, 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 g -g 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 get out of here. Terry Deacon's book describes our research, and the book is called The Symbolic Species, The Coevolution of Language in the Brain, and points out how when Hoover eventually died, analysis of his brain showed distinct abnormalities in the sections of the brain that are associated with human speech. The hit and miss nature of evolution by natural selection has been known to accidentally and suddenly produce structures that make what biologists call hopeful monsters, sudden saltations of evolutionary leaps due to rather large mutations that are favorable and give enhanced capabilities. But these are rare and most mutations are deleterious and so evolution generally proceeds very slowly. 